Okay, so we have been late to our Indiana Jones discussion because I have been struggling to come to terms with how I really feel about this movie. And I know you really love yeah. this film, Millie. You went to see this film how many times? Yeah, I saw it twice and I was almost going to see it three times if I had enough money. <laughs> um, I... Okay, I went to see this film the day before I had a 12-hour journey. Okay, the night before I had a 12-hour journey. And I already had a, like a giant migraine that day because of all the stress of traveling. Because I was like on a flying visit back to Cornwall and I was out again the next, the next day. So I like literally just had this kind of flying window to see Indiana Jones. But I'm somebody who loves Indiana Jones. Like Raiders is my favorite movie of all time. And I am a big defender of Crystal Skull. I know a lot of people hate that film. I know a lot of people mm. that hate that film. But I, yeah, there's silliness in it. Yeah, there's some, you know, action scenes that are a bit stupid in it. But I love the, the you know, the Russians. And I love the, uh, the, the quest for the, you know, to, you know, the skulls in Peru. And, and you know, people had problems with aliens. But I, I always said, well, what's so different about the voice of God? evaporating nazis in a on an island in raiders or magic stones sucking people's souls or whatever it is that happens in temple of doom you know water holy water healing sean connery's bullet wounds i mean you know it it all goes it's all out there you know and so i never had a problem with crystal skull on that on that front and i always felt like it was in sync with the rest of the indiana jones franchise with this film, I really struggled. And we are going to do spoilers here, so we can't talk spoilers. I really struggled with trying to align any of this film to the rest of the franchise in terms of standards and expectations. You know, I mean, this is, for me, it just didn't do it. It just didn't do it for me. I love I loved the opening what, 20 minutes, uh, de-aged Indiana Jones, you know, in the rain and the storm and the, the train. Yeah. I thought that was amazing. Like, I loved all that. Um, But even then, it felt a little weird to me because it was like, they're looking for this spear, but it turns out the spear is a, is a, is a forgery. But it doesn't matter, actually, because there's a better treasure over here, the Dial of Destiny. And it just, it felt like, I was thinking to myself, okay, that spear is obviously going to come back later on. Never did. And then, mm. and I was thinking, did you just stumble upon the Dial of Destiny on this train? Like, that, that feels a bit strange to me. It feels like, you know, everyone should have just been after this thing. Like, that's always the thing in an Indiana Jones movie. He's always after this thing. It's, you know, there's a, there, and it just felt like they tripped over the dial and were like, oh, look, it's this thing. Let's pocket this, you know. And so that even then that opening scene felt very strange to me. But the the overall adventure, I thought, I just found it underwhelming. I found it um, like they're going to Sicily and waiting for the tourists to leave. No, you should be going to like Borneo. You should be going to, you know, some deep, like, you know, go to some uncharted destination. I always said one of my biggest problems with the uncharted movie was they never went to any place that was uncharted. It was like New York City. It was, you know, this um this tourist like literally they they wash up on a tourist resort after they crash the plane, you know. It it, it never they were in well, as I think uh, Barcelona or Madrid or somewhere. They they were never in any uncharted territory. There's just a few little buildings that no one had ever been in for a while. Um and and this feels very guilty of that. And I know it's set in the 60s and, and all that, but you late 60s or, you know, 1969, 1970, but it's you, surely you could have sent him somewhere more interesting than a cave in Sicily where, and I'm, I live in Italy. Italy is the most beautiful place in the world. I mean, there is history just coming out of the walls in where I live, but I'm not going to set an Indiana Jones film here. You know, I need, you know, and, mm. and, and then the third act for me was a real, like, almost like a, a Hail Mary act of desperation. Like, is Indiana Jones going to put this down as his greatest adventure of all time? Probably not. Okay, what can we do to make it his greatest adventure of all time? Let's actually send him back in time. You know, and I just thought. Yeah. 
mm, like really <laughs> like he's gone back i know and i know holy water healing bullet wounds voice of god evaporating nazis in an island i know all of that can be considered just as crazy but I kind of feel like the whole point of Indiana Jones is he doesn't actually get to see history. He is a student of history. I don't hate the idea that he gets to go back in time and actually create his own contribution to history because it's, it's, he's the reason the dial gets completed, isn't it? Um, Thanks so much for watching our video, everybody. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can like us and subscribe to us over here on YouTube. And if you want to hear more of this conversation, head over to Spotify, Apple, places like that for a much longer version. But for now, YouTube thinks you'll, uh, you'll like these ones. They look pretty good. I, re I reckon you should check it out, especially that top one. Ooh, nice.